Hello and welcome to the third Slush Pile Standouts video. My name's David. And I'm Carmen. And we are both fiction editors at DarlingAxe.com. So as always, thanks very much to everyone who submitted. So what we're going to be doing today is basically what we've done in other videos, and that's we're taking a look at a bunch of different first pages of manuscripts. We might get to the end of them. We're looking at them as though we're screening for a contest. If we get to the end of the page, that's a really good sign. Um, sometimes we'll stop before then. Sometimes we'll only get a sentence in. Should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Do you yield? Oksana releases a breathy chuckle at her opponent's tone. The audacity of his question. Rebuilding her stance, glaring into his narrow sage eyes, she wipes a palm across her breeches. His dark brow arches, tall form sinking lower. Never, she spits out, holding her sword firm in one hand. It slams into her other palm, arms rippling as she mirrors his actions. Okay, sorry, I'm going to stop you there. All right. So, there's definitely some like nice clear writing here. Um, and uh, there's, you know, immediate conflict in this scene, these people who are um, having, doing battle. Um, but what I'm stopping at is, is a couple of language issues, basically. Um, there is kind of advice, like, or I guess a lot of agents do see, like, a fight scene, like the opening of a book is a fight scene. Um, <clears throat> and that's not always well received because you don't know these characters yet, you don't know the stakes, so there's not as much really to be gained by it necessarily. Um, but anyway, um, that's not why I'm stopping. Um, so a couple things here. This sentence, rebuilding her stance, glaring into his narrow sage eyes, she wipes a palm across her breeches. This is a kind of like... Cons like the, it's a construction that I snag on a lot. Um, which is like what I call a participle clause, rebuilding her stance. What does that look like exactly? These participle clauses are a way of like tacking on actions to the main clause of a sentence. Um, and, and quite often they deprive that mini action of its action. They kind of just like render it like rebuilding her stance. It's hard to picture exactly what that is. And then glaring into his narrow sage eyes. I can't really picture what, it, what sage eyes look like right like I, I don't quite have have that visual um, and then so you've got participle clause participle clause and then the main clause and that kind of like grammatical construction suggests to me that there's like a causality or a connection to the main clause when in fact it's just a sequence That's yeah it's a, like she does this then she does that and then she wipes her palms across her breeches or is she doing them all at the same time or like what do they have to do with each other yeah or, exactly except for that they happen all in it's a really right. like this is a very technical snag, um, but I see that 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 the beginning of a sentence with a participle clause. I see that a lot, especially in first person narratives. It's almost like when, when authors are trying to find a way to get a bunch more into a sentence, uh, convey a bunch of stuff uh, quickly, several actions quickly, and also to avoid starting every sentence with the pronoun I. Um, you also see it a lot. So or she. In this case, in, or yeah, they, I don't know. I mean, in a first-person narrative, right. that's that's kind of one thing I encounter more often. But anyway, to, without going on any longer about that, um, I just was encountering a little bit of a similar issue with arms rippling as she mirrors his actions, and just exactly what does that look yeah, like? Yeah, I don't know. I've heard arms muscles, rippling, like muscles, muscles rippling. rippling. Yeah, I've seen that, but or heard that. I've never seen that actually happen. But. <laughs> Just the picture for me when I read rippling arms, I just pictured these like kind of wobbly arms, which is maybe not what was intended. Yeah, that was kind of like my first take on that that image as well. It's but I, I, I get, get what it's supposed to be. But yeah. Um, so I was just kind of pulled out by a couple things there. Anyway, okay, without dwelling on very technical grammatical stuff any longer, let's move on to the next one. Sure. Yeah. Okay. The hopeful couple sat in the diocesan office, holding hands as if love could sway Father Aloysius into granting their annulments. He wanted to say that the church cared not a whit about their passion for each other, and furthermore, he had no say in the outcome. The validity of their first marriages was the litmus test. Had they been coerced? Were they under the influence of drugs or alcohol? Underage? Mentally incapacitated? He assured them he would forward their case to the next rung of the marriage tribunal, and they left looking pleased. Okay. He's, okay. 
So the reason I would stop there is because it's a lot of inner monologue straight off um, the bat and I wasn't immediately sure whose mind I was in. Um, the hopeful couple was who I thought, like I thought we were in one of their perspectives at first. And then by the last sentence, I'm pretty sure we were actually in the, in um, Father Aloysius's mind. Mm. Um, but it was just a lot to begin with, just like all that telling. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of opening in a, in a narrative summary yeah. of like, okay, there was these people in the office and this is what he thought about that. And this is what he thought about that. But there's not a scene. It's not like, we're not like transported to a time and place where we could, you know, yeah, I have step no, into this moment. I have no real picture of what's going on, except for there's some couple. I don't know anything about the couple really, except for, um, like a couple little details there, but nothing really about who they are, what they look like. Um, yeah, just not early enough okay. for me to go off of. No, that's that's good. It's good advice to always, you know, open with a scene to transport your readers directly into the whatever the narrative dreamscape. <laughs> All right. Got a car alarm going off. Okay. FC couldn't say how long it took him to pinpoint the ideal location and perfect specimens to assist in stalking the yearly event. But he did recall the exact minute, right down to the mere second, when he zeroed in on his target. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to stop you, even though we're just at the first sentence. Um, okay, let's just look at this, let's just look at this sentence. Like, this is the first sentence. This is a prologue, okay. But this is the first sentence of this novel. Like, what what does the first sentence tell you about the novel? What's kind of like forecast by it? You know, is there is there a theme here? Um, what? So F C. Okay, that's like immediately we have no sense of character right. from from two initials. So F C. Vague character couldn't say how long it took him to pinpoint the ideal location and perfect specimens to assist in stalking the yearly event. That's vague. I have no idea what that's talking about. But he did recall the exact minute, right down to the mere second, when he zeroed in on his target. Don't know what the target is. Don't know what the event is. It's, is the target a specimen or location? Like I, I get that, like, yeah, if I keep reading in a few sentences, some of this will start to make sense. But it's just such a... You need a, to have a really good first sentence. Yeah, that's that's a very... Um, there's a lot of, like, vagueness there that it's it's really hard to connect with, with anything, I you know, totally at that agree. point. So I'm sorry, but that's another one that I would stop short. Did you want to add anything? No. All right, next one. The cat saw something new in her house. A door was open. She sat on the tile floor of the kitchen in the pre-dawn darkness and considered it. Doors were never just left open. She wrapped her tail around herself and licked a paw. Doors were usually rushed through, feet flying, people spinning, and noise. She avoided doors given, given the associated chaos and traffic. She has never seen one just calmly standing half inside and half outside like this. Okay, um, I would say stop there. Okay. So I guess the first moment I was kind of a little bit interrupted um, was this doors were usually rushed through feet flying people spinning and noise it just seems like the rhythm was interrupted there somehow mm. and then ultimately I needed to stop because the tense shifted in the middle of a paragraph um, and it didn't seem deliberate um, so we were the cat saw door was and then the next paragraph doors were um, she avoided all past tense, simple past, and then suddenly she has never seen one just calmly. So this is now suddenly we're in present tense in the same paragraph, and that could just be a simple mistake, but it's not something that I really want to see on the first page of a manuscript. Um, I think that the rhythm, like the voice is kind of interesting, and it makes me think of model from Not Wanted on, a voy on the Voyage, um, narration from the perspective of a cat. Um, so I would generally be intrigued by that. I really like cats, so. Yeah, no, I I stumbled on that sentence as well as I was reading it. Feet flying, people spinning, and noise. Um, kind of seemed like a, yeah, an odd list. 
Um, I or... think it could work, but I think that the stuff around it has to be similarly poetic um, and cat-like, and it hasn't really... It wasn't. It just seemed out of place somehow. So it's like maybe the, the voice is, is coming along, but it's not quite all together. I would say. Yeah. Yeah, this one might be a good one to, to just read out loud a couple times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm liking, you know, my, my immediate impression is I'm intrigued. You're, there's a scene where kind of, you know, from this perspective, it's interesting. But, yeah. Right. All right. Oops. The first thing you got to know about me is that I know I'm not going nowhere. So you don't have to bother telling me I'm a waste of space because I already know. People have been telling me that all my life, it's all I ever hear. Stop wasting my time, Holly. Holly, I'm too busy for you, for any of your crap now. Go away and leave me in peace. You're just a big waste of space, Holly. Holly, what are you going to do with your life? You're just wasting your life, Holly. And on and on and on at me. At school, there's this teacher who thinks, as long as we've got our education, we're going to be fine. Well, I already know where I'm going, and that's nowhere. Like I already told you. My name is Holly. And if I want to put a love heart over my eyes, I will, okay, Miss Sarkey Trent? I got two brothers and a sister. My dad lives with this woman named Sh woman called Sherry, and I go down my dad some weekends. My mom don't like it, but tough. He left and she got to live with it, like we all got to. I never wanted him to go, but to be fair to my dad, my mom's a right cow. My brother Kyle is a right bastard, like my dad. And Brandon, my other brother, is not much better. My sister, Chantal Marie, is a baby, so I don't bother much with her. The second thing you got to know about me is this is my story, and I'll tell it like I want to tell it. And you can't expect too much because I'm a bit thick. Don't worry, I don't mind being thick. And at least I'm having a go at writing a story. Not everyone do, do they? Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Um... I, I really like this. Um, there's there's really great voice here. Yeah. Um, there's a lot. Uh, yeah, the voice is very strong. Um, and even though we're not opening with a scene, and we're kind of like right into this character's head, and the, and the telling is is thick. Um, it's conversational, kind of like J.D. Salinger. Yeah, kind of. you can get away with a lot if you've got a really strong voice. And this character um, does. And this character definitely does. Um, so yeah, really enjoying it. But by the time we we hit that third paragraph, it's we're getting so deep into telling that there's no forward momentum. We're just kind of like stuck. It's set up. The same. Yeah, it's all set up. It's just set up. And the thing is, like readers want to kind of like participate. At it, like that's part of the process of like enjoying a piece of fiction is you get to you know pick up clues along the way and come to your own conclusions you want to come to your own conclusion for example that Kyle is a right bastard like dad and how like you want to like demonstrate yeah. that so that the reader can so maybe you could yeah. like I think if I were gonna give some like developmental edits on this I think the first paragraph was really good um, read it out loud a little bit there's some things that you could tighten up probably the second paragraph um, about family, that could be tightened up a lot and shortened quite a bit. Like, um, I like the details about dad um, and mom. Maybe mention that you have the siblings. I see. I, I want to get into a scene very quickly. Yeah. I want this to be like an important moment that we're opening with and, and I not get so much explained right enough. up at the front. But I also don't mind, um, like also in the style of like Moby Dick talking about storytelling I think and and like a number of really accomplished authors begin by talking about storytelling and I think that that is such an incredible tradition um, in novels that I think that if you're gonna do it you got to do it well obviously mm -hmm. um, but I think it can be done just you need to really work on that and be careful because it has been done and done really well so if you want to do it again you got to do it super yeah it's yeah, really well. uh, yeah. Voice and visual, I think, are the two key elements that you need for sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you for Thanks. that. Hey, that's all we got for you today. Thank you very much for watching. And sorry we didn't get to the end of any of those. Um, but uh, I guess that that is the reality of of screening for contest entries or waiting through a slush pile. Sometimes you don't. Um, for more advice like what you heard today, um, take a look at the chopping blog at darlingaxe.com. Um, there's a bunch of different articles there and we hope we can make another one of these videos shortly. All right, sweet. Thanks, Thanks. very much.